Happy New Year to those of you that are joining on Facebook. God bless you this morning. Glad to see you. Um, this the first Sunday of a new year. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm not going to belabor the time with a whole lot of uh, talking, but I'm just going to get right to it. God bless you, Pastor Kevin. God bless you, Pastor Jeanette. Good to see you all this morning. Uh, we're going to open up in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for 2020, but we thank you, God, for bringing us all into a new year that we may come together as your people to study, to show ourselves approved. I thank you, God, for another day, another opportunity to, to do your will and to please you. Father, as we go into this new year and into this new season, we ask you, God, to just be with us, cover us, protect us, use us for your glory. God, I give you the praise and the glory this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. All right. We, um, you know, I'm going to get right to it. Um, I used to, back in the day um, when I passed it in Somerset, I used to, um, every year I used to have a theme. I used to have a, God bless you, call. I used to have a theme for the year. And, you know, every year it was, you know, like um, the year of, deliverance or the year of increase or the year of prosperity or something like that. So, you know, I was inspired again this year to come back and do that again. This is the first time I've actually placed a theme on um, a year in a while. So um, this year's team is the year of the spiritual gift or the year of gifting or the year of gifts. Um, this is the year that we expand our spiritual gifting because <clears throat> in order for the body of Christ to be what God wants it to be, we need these spiritual gifts in operation. We cannot do this without gifting. Talents don't cut it. Talents can only get you so far, but the gifting is wrapped in anointing and the anointing is provided by God. And if we if we use our gifts, we will see results in all that we do and all that we say. So um, going along the theme of the kingdom of God, the gifts are just more of the kingdom, right? It's just another aspect of the kingdom is gifting. And so we, we come in this year talking about and developing our gifts determining what they are asking god to tell us and then help us develop them so we can be and do what we have sent we have been sent here to do in the earth so that being said that's my introduction i'm going to bring you over to corinthians chapter first corinthians chapter 12 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 1. All right. And the scripture reads, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Now remember, this is Paul. Paul is, he is, he has written a letter. First Corinthians is nothing more than a letter that he wrote to one of the churches that he founded. And this is the first letter to the church at Corinth. So it's first Corinthians. And he, you know, if you read this letter, it talks about a whole lot of stuff. But um, one of the aspects of what he wanted to talk to them about was spiritual gifting. And he said, I would not have you ignorant, brother. You know that you were Gentiles. Thank God we're not Gentiles. And I'm not going to go into the, the Jew versus Gentile discussion this morning. But some of you, I hopefully all of you have heard um, my thoughts on that. And um, you know that you were Gentiles. And, and remember, Corinth is, in, is a Greek, let's call it an outpost or Greek city. Um, 
So good morning, Sister Lisa. Um, so we are in Europe, right? This is a church in Europe. So he is right when he says, um, um, where'd I go? Um, you know that you were Gentiles or Europeans carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but the Holy Ghost. One of the things I learned as I was studying this is something I did not know, is that um, in Greek culture, they, they um, worshipped numerous gods. And part of the worship of numerous gods was speaking in tongues, speaking in unknown language that um, was more excitable and things like that. It was more gibberish than anything else, but it really had nothing to do with God. It wasn't a heavenly language. It wasn't any of that. But that was part of the rituals that they did with these um these idols. I hope this is making sense. Good morning, my brother. My 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 younger brother, Bill Blass. God bless you, sir. Good to see you. Um, so I hope this is kind of bringing some correlation. And if you really think about it, you 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 question some of the things that we do today, and you ask, where did it come from? Every tongue that you hear is not a spiritual tongue. Now, I don't need to get no amens off of that because I know for a fact that every tongue is not a spiritual tongue. You can't take somebody in a back room and teach them how to speak in tongues. You can't have a speaking tongue class. That's not how this works. Speaking in tongues is a language unto God. It is the heavenly language. So if we were in heaven, that would be the language that we spoke. They don't speak English in heaven. They don't speak German or Russian or French. There is a language unto heaven that at times God will allow to be presented here on earth. However, in order for God to present his language, his language here on earth, you must have someone to interpret what is being said. I hope that makes sense, right? So, um... Be, don't be enamored by folks that hick a messiah and come in hondes and tie my tie, loose my tie, all that stuff. Um, so it says, verse number four, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number four. Now there are diversities of gifts, meaning that there are different types of gifts, right? But what? But the same spirit. This is so key and so important. Every spiritual gift comes from the same place. There's not different gifts come from different places. Every spiritual gift comes from God himself. I hope that makes sense. And so <clears throat> no matter what your gift is, it, it comes from God. All right. Um, Verse number five, and there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. So every administration, every every leader, leadership or leader role in the ministry is different, right? It's not one. There's not just a pastor. There is all of these different these these different administration gifts. A, a bishop is an administration. Um, an apostle is an administration. Um, uh, uh, an evangelist is an administration. All of these administering gifts um, that are separate, and he uses those because they are separate from some of the other gifts that you'll see as we go along. Um, and then he says. In verse number six, and there are diversities of operations, right? But the same God, which works in all. 
everybody doesn't use the gift the same way or in the same place, right? So there are diversities of operations where we use our gifts and how we use our gifts, right? And, and I want to say gifts and keep using the word gifts because there is a difference between a gift and a talent. And like I said in the beginning, a talent is going to take you but so far. But a gift is wrapped in the anointing of God and it can change a circumstance and a situation. That's what we're doing, right? We're not trying to make people feel good. We're not trying to make people... Uh, forget about their problems from yesterday or or tell them that if they spin around three times there's going to be a check in the mail we're not trying to do that we're trying to affect change right in the people in society in communities we are here to make change we cannot make the change but the change comes through the gift that we give you can change somebody's heart through your gift. And, and look at what all of these say. They all say the same thing. Um, verse number four, but the same spirit. Verse number five, but the same Lord. Verse number six, which worketh in all. Everything comes from God. Now remember, um, Wednesday night, you know, and I, and I do it from time to time, and you'll know that we talk about Galatians 5 and 22, 22 through 24, which are the qualities of God, the love, the joy, the peace, the long-suffering, the, the gentleness, the goodness, the meekness. All those things are God's qualities, right? And those things come from the Spirit. Now, this is the other side of what God gives us when we have His Spirit activated. No. We don't have to roll on the floor. We don't have to have oil poured on our head. We don't have to, certainly don't have to have it poured down our throat um, in order for us to receive the Spirit of God. He has given all of us His Spirit. However, in order to unlock the Spirit, there has to be an acceptance of the King. And when you accept the King, you unlock the Spirit and you unlock the um, spiritual gifts. Hey, Sister Barbara, God bless you. Um, you unlock the spiritual qualities and you unlock the spiritual gifts. All right. Um, let's go to verse number seven. We're in first Corinthians chapter 12, verse number seven. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man. Can I say that again? The manifestation of the spirit is is given to every man to profit with all, right? Every man. And if y'all were standing, if y'all were sitting, we were all sitting in a room next to each other, I'd tell you to look at somebody and say, every man. The spirit, the manifestation of the spirit is given to everyone. Not because you spoke in tongues, and I don't want to get into that today, but we will get into that. Not because you spoke in tongues and not not mixing up the tongues between an unknown tongue and an other tongue being and I have to because I, I don't went down the street so and you know that and if you don't know now you will know that there is a difference between an unknown tongue God bless your sister Brickhouse good morning there is a difference between an unknown tongue and an other tongue right an unknown tongue is that heavenly language tongue that we were talking about that requires an interpreter. The other tongue is speaking in uh, speaking in your language, but it is heard in other languages. For example, I can speak English, but someone that's Spanish that doesn't know English will hear in their own language. And that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. And so we have to separate that experience from the experience of the gift of tongues, right? Because there are two different things. We have to make sure that we make uh, uh, a distinction between the two, okay? So what we're dealing with today and we were talking about are the gift of unknown tongues, 
not the gift of other tongues. That's that's amazing what happened on the day of Pentecost. People spoke in other tongues. Amen. Um, verse number eight, for to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom. Doesn't say wisdom. Let me say that again. It does not say wisdom. It says the word of wisdom, right? There is a difference between just being wise and speaking wisdom. And so this gift, and, and again, these are gifts that we are going to develop and build on in 2021 so that we can be stronger and more powerful in the kingdom of God and for his purpose. And so someone, I don't know who it is, could be one of, one of us on this phone this morning, has the gift of, um, of the word of wisdom. You speak wisdom all the time. People come to you because everything you say is wise and makes sense. It's not your wisdom, right? It's God's wisdom working through you by his spirit, right? Okay. Um, to another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom come from the same source and not two different sources and so when you have the word of knowledge you are speaking right this is a speaking gift you are speaking knowledge and and let me help you out these have nothing to do with preaching in a pulpit these are gifts that you can use at work in the street, on your uh, anywhere, it doesn't matter where it is. But when these gifts operate in you, they operate in you for the purpose of building the kingdom, right? So, I don't know who has the word of knowledge. I don't know who has the word of wisdom. But let God use you. And remember, there's a scripture that says, "To whom much is given, much is required." So there are some of us that will have one gift, but there are some of us that will have multiple gifts that will be used at certain times according to the spirit. You're not going to you're not going to be you know using the same you may if you have one gift you're going to use that gift. If you have five gifts you're going to use those five gifts based on the situation and or the circumstance that you are in at that particular time and so some of us will have more than one gift and God will require more from us and he will not give you more than you can handle right he will give you what is required for you however everyone will have a gift because everyone is going to be required to work God bless you, Brother Rivers. Good to see you. God bless you. Um, yep. Let's see. To another, and I'm at verse number nine now, to another, I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number nine, to another, faith by the same spirit. There is a gift of faith. There is faith because every man, right, everyone has been given a measure of faith, meaning Everyone has been giving a portion of faith. We all have faith, right? We all have it. There's, there's, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. And if you remember, one of my older messages talked about the correlation between faith and Christ, which means that every person that has faith has Christ. So every man has been given a measure of Christ, right? Because those two words are interchangeable um, by the same spirit to every man faith. Now faith, a, a, a gift of faith is going to be different than a measure of faith. Everybody don't have the gift of faith because some people can believe stuff that just makes no sense to the rest of us. Like, you know, a pastor that says, you know, God said, I'm going to build, you know, a 2000 seat auditorium. 
And people are looking around and saying, but pastor, we got $5 in the bank. And he's like, well, it doesn't matter what we have in the bank. It's not my money, it's God's money. And God, if God said it, I believe it, and it's going to come to pass. And so that meant that that gift of faith is a very powerful thing because people won't understand some of the things that you're saying because they won't make sense, right? But you know, based on your spiritual connection with the one who gave you that gift in the first place, right? You'll know that this is going to come to pass, all right? Verse number 10, to another, I'm sorry, to another, the gift of healing by the same spirit. Man, gift of healing. Um, pe people were healed through Peter's shadow. He didn't touch him. He didn't do anything. But they were healed. There's a gift called healing. You can speak healing. You can lay hands on the sick. Whatever it is, if you have the gift, saints, don't just use it on a prayer line. Well, I don't know who I'm talking to. <laughs> but don't just use your gift of healing on a prayer line so people can just say, oh, wow, you know, he's a, he's a gifted healer or she's a gifted healer. Go to the hospital where there's real sick people. Right? Go somewhere where people are sick and lay hands on them or speak life into them. If that is your gift, then that is your responsibility to go into the world and heal. Christ was a healer, right? He didn't just sit back and say, you know what? I'm going to wait for these people to come to me. Tell everybody that I'm going to be in, in, uh, in Jericho on sitting on this rock and just have them come heal them and I'll heal them. Nope. He went out and he went to people and he healed everyone. The Bible says he healed everybody. But then there was those times where there were people around. Watch this. There were people around who were unbelievers. And he had to put them out in order to do a work. Right? The Bible even says that he could no, do no good work in his own town because people only saw him for um, who he was, the carpenter's son. That's it. So he couldn't do anything there. So sometimes other people's unbelief will hinder what you're doing. But there, these, these, some of the people that he went to had such strong belief. It wasn't that he did anything other than inspire the people to have faith to believe that healing was possible. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Verse number 10, to another, I think I saw Reverend Brickhouse. God bless you, sir. I see you out there. Um, to another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. Mm -hmm. To another, discerning of spirits. Do you think we need discernment in the church? In the body? Do you think that gift can support us operationally when we have um, a ministry and uh, demons? <laughs> Satan, evil spirits come in to destroy or, or uh, separate or cause confusion in a ministry. Do you think that we need someone with a discerning spirit in the ministry in order to help us to govern the church, to help us weed out? The pastor doesn't have every gift. The pastor should not have every gift. And, and, and I want to bring this into perspective. This is the year of gifting, right? So, and I say this all the time, when you are praying for your ministry, don't ask God to send you people. God has a sense of humor. 
He will send you some people and you may get anything. You may get some trifling folk. You may get some uh, download. You may get any kind of folk. But when we pray, we ask God to send us gifts. Because that's what's needed in the ministry. It is not people. Is it, just because we fill up seats don't mean we have a great ministry. A great ministry is a ministry that has gifts in operation everywhere. Some of those gifts are designed for in the house. Some of those gifts are designed for out of the house. And so when we ask God to send us gifts, right? If they are gift, if we are being gifted, then ministry is going forth, not church. I didn't come here to have church. I came here to in, ingratiate myself in ministry. I come gifted. I come with a teaching gift. So if God sends me to church X, Y, Z, and he's going to give me the opportunity to exercise my gifting, because I don't want to go there. I'll leave that alone. But if he come, if he sends me somewhere, he will allow me space to exercise my gifts so that the body of Christ can be edified. Mm -hmm. You are there to edify the body through your gifts. Now, it is 1058 and I'm getting ready to close. Um, but the but the Bible also says, and I'm going to close with this. The Bible also says that your gifts will make room for you and put you in the presence of great men. Now, one way to look at that is that you know your your gift will just make room for you. You don't have to do anything. Your your gift will open doors for you. Your gift. Will, will change things for you. That's one way to look at it. But I like to look at it like this. Um, when the Queen of Sheba heard about the wisdom of Solomon, she went to see him. She didn't go empty-handed. She went bearing gifts. And those gifts were meant, really meant nothing to Solomon because he had everything. But in order to have audience with a king, especially a king with some wisdom, you're going to have to bring some gifts in order to have an audience. And so that's the beauty of God, saints, is that you have nothing of value to bring to him in order to be in his presence. You have nothing. There is nothing you have that he wants. He don't, you can have a million dollars. He don't need it. He don't want it. As a matter of fact, that million dollars you holding in your hand came from him anyway. So, but what you have is, and this is why God is so awesome and so great, is that he gives you the gift so that you can use it so that you can have audience with him. Because when you have audience with the king, you can present back to him the gift that he gave you, and he can see that you didn't just sit on it, but you used it for the building of the kingdom. And so I use my gift in order for me to have audience with the king. And I thank God that the king gave me the gift so that I could give it back to him and so that I can glorify him with the gift so that I can sit with him and learn of him and sup with him and he can teach me and, and mold me and shape me into who I am going to be. Somebody needs to give God praise this morning because God is so awesome and he is so great that he loves us so much that he requires nothing from us and he gives us everything for us to be in his presence. Come on, y'all. This is an amazing God that we serve. And I thank God that he is the one that gives us everything we need in order to be with him. So I give God praise this morning. We're going to go into um, more of this on Wednesday um, because the last scripture, oh, I'm sorry. Let me read verses 10 and 11. 
to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another various types of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Whether you know it or not, you are gifted. If you, if you know you're gifted, come on and use your gift. If you know you're gifted and, and you know exactly what your gift is, come on, use it. If you got three of them, use them. If you got five of them, say, Lord, use me. If you don't know what your gift is, all you got to do is ask him. Mm. And he will reveal. Let me tell you something. People ask God for money. People ask God for jobs. People ask God for new things. People ask God for all kinds of stuff. But why don't we ask him for a, um, a knowledge of our gifting? God, what is it that you want me to do? What is it that you have given me that I may be a blessing to the people and glorify you? Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. I feel good this morning. God is amazing. He is amazing. I thank God this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for every person that is on this call this morning. Thank you, God, for revealing your gifting to us. For this, God, you have declared is the year of gifting. And so, God, we will establish our gifts. We will build on our gifts. We will use our gifts for the purposes of building your kingdom and the purpose of glorifying you. So God, we thank you, we praise you, we give you honor and glory today for you are great and greatly to be praised. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, praise you, brother. Amen, God bless you everybody. I'll see, I'll see you all on, uh, I'll see you Wednesday. God bless you, cuz.